Good morning. Before we begin our online worship, I thought it would be good to have a prayer. Have a prayer because there is unrest in much of our country, in the major cities where protests have erupted, um, and unfortunately it has led to, at times, rioting, um, looting, vandalism, um, and injury. Uh, as we look at this as Christians, you know, our hearts should uh, just uh, break. What has God called us to do? Uh, to love one another as ourselves. Uh, which means what? That where we see injustice, we speak up and we seek to, to be there for our, our brother and sister. Uh, loving one another also means that we listen to God's will and follow his commands, which means we don't steal from other people. We don't vandalize what, what is not our own and that we seek to protect life. We live in a world where there is chaos. You know, when we see it erupt in the United States, it, it might take us by surprise, but if you're to look at what's happening in the world, this is something which happens all the time. And so as we gather here today, we realize that what needs to change are, are people's hearts. What needs to change is actually our hearts. And so, in this world of chaos, um, let us go before God and ask Him to be with our communities, to be with the people who live in our state and in our, in our country, and to help us live in love towards one another. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this country in which we live. You know, nothing is perfect here on earth. We realize that. And uh, it's oftentimes made more evident as, as things break apart and as, as violence erupts and rioting and, and injustice in, in all different types is present. Lord, help us to be your light in this world of darkness. We ask that you would be with the, the leaders of our community, our state, and in our country, giving them wisdom and insight at this time. And we pray that you would also uh, be working in the hearts of all people so that we would be able to, to come together and talk with one another and, and work things out as in a God-pleasing way. Help us always to show love to others, to speak up where there is injustice, and also to help protect others. We ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's 
sing right, and his hair in praise God joyfully. Blessed living and life giving water, now preserve us from evil within. For in Christ comes the Son, all believers are one, in this washing that cleanses from sin. Let us open our worship service with a prayer. O oh God, on this day you sent your Holy Spirit to kindle faith and ignite the proclamation of the gospel for all people, spanning the breadth of time and space. Pour out your Spirit upon us, we pray. By your Holy Spirit, increase our commitment to be faith-filled followers of the risen Christ. Shape the church's speech and song, that she may continually bear witness to the truth. Bless this time we come to worship you, to receive your word, and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have not lived as you have desired. Forgive us for the times we have sinned against you by the things that we have done and the words we have spoken. Many times we fail to live as your children and speak the truths of your word. Even our very thoughts are in conflict with your ways. For these and every other sin, forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. God recognized our need to be forgiven and acted upon it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Through faith in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for confidence in the resurrection for all believers and for the gift of salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace among people and nations, for the church, the body of Christ, and for joy in our fellowship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, and for all who gather this day for worship and service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Father, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Costco 
Yeah, so you have to wear... You have to. Yep, to you gotta wear a mask, yep. Mm -hmm. And the masks, they make it hard to see each other, don't they? No, they don't. No? Can you tell if somebody's smiling at you? Yes. Okay. So, you guys have named a lot of things that I would say build relationships, like going to somebody's house or doing something fun like that. And those kind of, they're fun to do because they get, you get to be with other kids and do stuff like that, right? So why don't you guys try this? Take a sip of that one. Tell me what you think of it. Cold. Cold? Yeah, is it, is it good? Cold and good. Mm -hmm. Cold and good? Yeah. Yeah, it's cold and good. Can we drink that again? Good. Alright, drink it up. Alright, don't drink too much now. We almost, we drank all, all right, of it. Alright, now, let's try yeah. this one out. Tell me what you think of this one. This is called, labeled, I labeled it Playground. What'd you guys think of that one? Even better. Even yeah. better. It tastes like juice. Yeah? Yeah. I think it is juice. It is pretty delicious. All right, now let's see. What show? Let's do vacation. Let's see what we do with vacation. I'm just going to do one more for the sake of time. Mmm, that was yummy. <laughs> that was yummy. Yeah. This is a yummy one. Okay. Let's try this one out. What do you think? Dad, aren't you going to move this cup away? Yep. All right, try this one. Even better. <laughs> Even better, huh? That one's pretty good. Call that one vacation. Good. That was root beer. That was root beer. Oh, taste. Super Thank delicious, you. isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right. Now, there's a story in the Bible about a guy named Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was a prophet, and God told him that he had to go to these people and tell them that they, he had to tell them a lot of different things, but one of the things that, he, that those people, all right, come on, take your straws. Okay. Thanks. Lucas, take yours. <laughs> one of the things that he cautioned those people about was that they had built false cisterns. A cistern is a thing that holds water. Kind of like a cup. And they had built false cisterns. And they were too reliant on those. Could we... Do you guys drink water every day? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys drink root beer every day? No. Definitely not. Do we go to the playground every day? No. No. So which of those things is needed for our everyday life? Water. water. Yeah, which we label relationships. With God. And with God. That's right. No, we said relationships, God. Uh huh, that's right. Promise. And we labeled these other ones vacation and playground, didn't we? This is the funnest. These are the ones yeah. that we might say are the false cisterns. They're delicious, aren't they? And even though the coronavirus has come and it's taken some of these things away from us, it's not the end of the world, is it? That we don't get to do these things. But if we were to lose this one, this would be bad, wouldn't it? Yeah. So when we can't go, and there's some, and some people have lost these things, haven't they? Like us, like we can't do play dates right now, can we? And that's not good. Dad. But it's okay that we lose this one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Dad. Yes, son. Why did you not fill up the? Well, we ran out of time. Yeah, we ran out of time. So the point being that the coronavirus, even though it is bad, it has highlighted some of the things that we've lost that are okay for us to lose. But it's also made us think about the things that we need to make sure we don't lose. We need to make sure we try really hard to keep having water. We can find a way to have relationships with people, even though Daddy, the coronavirus is here. 
And That's right. Yes, what would the fourth one be filled up with? Mm, what do you think is something that we could live without, but we really miss it? Oh. Go ahead, Pat. Seven's up. Whatever it's called. Five's up? Seven's up? No. Seven's up. Oh, seven up? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pop. Yeah, that would be something. Yep. Uh, yes, Lucas? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, yeah. <laughs> Yep. No Those are all delicious drinks that. that we could have put in the cup. Yep. No fellow. So, <laughs> when, what is the point of this whole sort of thing? Um, that we need the water. We need the water, which is? Relationship with God. Yeah, with relationship with God. So as we think about the coronavirus and what we're trying to achieve, we're not going to work really hard <laughs> to try to get our vacations back. <laughs> They are delicious, and I love going on vacation. But what we're really going to work hard at is trying to make sure we can build good relationships with the people around us. Oh, Thanks, guys. It's just... yeah. The Old Testament lesson from the 11th chapter of Genesis. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to the seventh chapter of St. John. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. 
Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. For our confession of faith today, we will be looking at the third article of the Apostles' Creed, as well as Martin Luther's explanation of it. What has the Church throughout the ages confessed about the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified, and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let us live for Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we begin this message on Pentecost Sunday, I would like to read to you about that first Christian Pentecost and what happened on that day. We read from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they, that is the disciples, were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is an amazing thing. Uh, they were able to, to speak other languages at that time. And in Jerusalem, because it was a festival, there were people uh, throughout the Roman Empire that had come to celebrate the festival uh, in Jerusalem um, from all around the Roman Empire. And they heard the disciples speaking in their own languages and they were saying, what in the world is going on? Are these guys drunk or is something else happening? And Peter responded by saying these words. Listen, these men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your older men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And he ends by saying, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I brought with me something which is a little bit unusual for this time of the year. Can you recognize it? It's a Christmas ornament. Uh, these are things which it's probably been about five months since you have seen them. Usually we see ornaments leading up to Christmas as well as the Christmas season. Why do we have them? Well, they're wonderful to put on our Christmas trees. They help adorn it uh, to make it more beautiful, especially as you see the, the lights which uh, reflect off of them and, and give a beauty, especially during a very dark time of, of the year. Uh, they also announce that something special is going on or is happening. And as Christians, we know what that is. Uh, that a savior was born for us. And it is something which we, we relish and we rejoice in. But I think about uh, ornaments as well. These, like the ones I have, are very fragile. Some are not, they're kind of indestructible. Many are made kind of like glass. Have you ever dropped an ornament? I have, more times than I would like to admit. And what happens when you drop an ornament? Well, first thing I pray that it would not break, but often that is not the case. You know, they hit the ground and if there were ones like this, they just shatter and pieces go everywhere. I think about that. That's one of the drawbacks with regard to have uh, glass ornaments. They're easily broken. Now I bring up the breaking of Christmas ornaments because actually it reminds me of what is happening in the scripture lessons for today, as well as what is happening in this world. Pat Horst began by reading about the Tower of Babel, a story about broken people being scattered. The story begins with brokenness. We read about the mindset of the people at the very beginning. They said, come, let us build for ourselves a city with a tower that reaches up to the heavens so that we will make a name for ourselves. Now, it's important to read that in light of what was spoken earlier in Genesis. It is recorded that God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them, and it was very good. What does that mean? Far more beautiful and exquisite than any elaborate Christmas ornament is you and me. God created us humans to shine forth with the brilliance of, of his image, his glory, his goodness, his grace, his love, his care, not just for other people, but also for creation. 
But Satan came and he tempted Adam and Eve, and they failed the temptation. They gave into it, and what happened was that that image of God which they had, God's goodness was, was no longer there. It had been shattered because of sin. And we see this throughout the book of Acts and also in the story of the Tower of Babel. People there could care less about reflecting any of the grace and glory of God or what God desired for them to do in their lives. What they sought to put on display was, was not God's goodness, but their power, their might. They were going to build a tower that reached to the heavens. They were going to become like God and make a name for themselves. But God intervened and then continued to set in motion his plan to save the world through a descendant of Abraham. Now, the story of, of Babel isn't just about what the world was like thousands and thousands of years ago. It's a tragic story of our shattered world today. Many of you may not be aware that my wife and I lived for two years in Minneapolis and St. Paul. For a year in Minneapolis, and then for almost a year in St. Paul. And we have many friends and relatives there as well. Those cities are now in the news. After the death of a man in police custody, these cities have erupted, not just with, with peaceful protests, but with riots, with looting, with fires being set, with vandalism. And it has spread to other places in our country. What do you see on display? Well, one of the things that I see is I see anger. I see hatred of others as well as those who are in authority. We observe a, a lack of love, lack of self-control. We observe greed, stealing, and the destruction of property. People doing whatever they want and, and justifying it. And as I look at that, I, I ask a simple question. Where is the fear of God? Where is loving others as yourself? From the beginning of the time when that man was arrested to now, uh, we are reminded that what does God want of us? That we are to fear and love him above all things, but that we are also to love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus said these are the greatest commandments. And many people, those are things that are furthest from their mind as they see what is happening in the world. But as Christians, we should always keep those things first and foremost. It should cause us to think, what are we to do? It seems like what is natural for our sinful nature is that if we are wronged, the, the first thing that we do is we lash back in anger. If you perceive something to be broken, then you justify breaking other things. Even it, it has nothing to do with the original injustice. Spring is a time of the year that, for me, growing up in the upper Midwest was a very special time of the year. After a very long winter, you would see life returning to the earth. You know, grass turning green, flowers popping up, fields uh, being planted, gardens starting to grow. And, uh, you know, you look forward to that time when you were able to harvest your fields and your gardens and, and be able to partake of the, the fruit which would sustain you. It was a wonderful time. But, uh, you know, we plant things, and it's not only good things which also come up, but there's also weeds. And it can be a, a fight, uh, as many of you know, in your own gardens or uh, in your own fields if you are, are farmers. But I think about that. We live in a world where you would think now with spring coming, there should be this beauty which is being on display as, as uh, there's life again returning in the northern hemisphere. But what do we see here is, is things which are just more detestable than weeds, as I mentioned. We see hatred. We see justice, injustice. We see prejudice. We see envy, evil thoughts and actions that lead to what? More brokenness in the world. And we see evidence of this, yes, as we look at Minneapolis and St. Paul. But if we are honest with ourselves, it's happening in the world all the time and in many different ways. My wife just learned this past week that one of her nephews is getting a divorce. What does that mean? A family is being shattered. 
we come across people who are, are addicts. And what do I see? I see shattered, a shattered life. I hear of people who have committed suicide. And I think of, of families whose lives are forever going to be broken because of what happened. Some people believe, yes, the world is a mess, and so what we need to do is just continue to break it down, knock it down, and, and completely destroy it. But as Christians, is that how God sees this world? Is that what he would like us to do? You know, I look at the message of Pentecost, and it is this, that God has not abandoned this broken world of war, of injustice, of murder, of hatred, and of greed. Rather, God seeks to restore and renew the people of the world rather than to discard them. The Lord desires to save rather than destroy. His wish is to bring people back rather than having them being separated from each other. He desires to establish a peace, a greater peace than the world can give. Now, it's important to remember that if God was going to reclaim this world, then the confusion, the ignorance, the brokenness, and the scattering had to be ended. And Pentecost signals a dramatic reversal of this in a particular way. It's like the beginning of something new happening. People from all different parts of the world were present in Jerusalem. Then came the miracle of Pentecost. The disciples began speaking in different languages, and the people were amazed. God was now speaking and inviting people alienated from himself and scattered throughout all the world back into a relationship uh, with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Pentecost, in other words, then, is the reversal of the scattering of the, the Tower of Babel. It gathers people together in Jesus Christ. It puts an end to the confusion about our creator, and ignorance about whether God cares about you and me and other people. And it gives a witness that God's grace is available for all people in Christ. The message of Pentecost is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So what does that mean for you and me in this world right now? Well, I would like to actually go back to this Christmas ornament. Now, some of you might wonder, why am I bringing up a, a Christmas ornament on the day of Pentecost? Isn't Pentecost, you know, five months later than Christmas? Uh, isn't Pentecost that time of the year when we should be speaking about the Holy Spirit? Why am I bringing up a Christmas ornament? Well, yes, Pentecost is about the Holy Spirit. But why did Jesus, along with the Father, send the Holy Spirit? To begin with, the Spirit is the one who brings us to trust in Jesus and keeps us believing in our Savior. As St. Paul reminds us, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Or as we confess in the Nicene Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? The Lord and the what? Giver of life. Yeah, you remember that. It's also important to remember the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples right before he ascended into heaven. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The power of the Holy Spirit is seen in the disciples as they give witness to the saving that comes through Jesus Christ alone. So the Holy Spirit is, is there to promote Jesus, not one's ego with regards to how good or how great they may be, that's like trying to build the Tower of Babel over again, something which we as Christians should not do. Indeed, those first Christians were in some ways like Christmas ornaments. Empowered and enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they announced, they proclaimed a crucified and risen Savior to the amazement, to the joy, and to the salvation of all those who believed. They declared God's Son to be the one who came to remake what was shattered. He came to make it possible for us to once again have that beginning of the image of God being created in us. Christ went to the cross with all of the brokenness of the world with him so that it may be taken care of, so that our brokenness, your brokenness and mine, would not be our downfall, but that we might be able to be renewed 
Remember, God did not want to discard us. He sent his son to restore, to renew, and to rescue us, to make us what he originally intended for us to be. And what is that? To be people who reflect the glory and the goodness of God, who display his image to this world. It's important for each of us today, for as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, we are witnesses for Christ. You and I are like a beautiful ornament for Christ in a world where there is division, prejudice, hatred, pride, selfishness and self-centeredness and lack of self-control, where people seem to, to work to divide people and shatter and break things. You and I are to be beacons of the life-giving and life-bringing-together message found in Jesus Christ. You and I are to allow the Holy Spirit to bring forth the, the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. We are to put on display, like, like ornaments, something beautiful. And what is that? As St. Paul writes in, in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and of course, self-control. And as we do, we will be like beautiful ornaments. God will use us in our lives as a witness to Christ. Now, you may not consider yourselves much of an ornament or even a beautiful ornament at that, for you realize that you are not perfect. Well, take heart, I'm not perfect either. But the good news is, you and I, we have a perfect Savior. We don't need to be perfect. In fact, at times, the greatest witness that you and I can give to our family, our friends, our neighbors, and as well as to anyone that we encounter, is when we adorn our life with the love that God has shown us, with the patience and grace that he has given you, and the joy of being forgiven and renewed each day in Christ. So allow the Holy Spirit to make you as what I would say, a beautiful ornament for Christ, to display the wonder, the goodness, the grace of God in all that you say and do. Something that you are to do not just at Christmas as you hang ornaments, or on Pentecost as you remember the Holy Spirit coming to us, but each and every day of our lives. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercies endure forever. Whenever we gather together for worship, we are encouraged to look and be reminded of all the things that God has given to us, the things which are physical, the things which are spiritual, those things which last uh, just for a time here on earth, but also those things which are eternal. And God encourages us always to be thankful, always to be grateful. As we gather here today, I am so grateful for, for you uh, and for all who are, are watching online. Remember, God cares for you. He has blessed you richly. And I thank God all the time for the members of Trinity Lutheran and the friends who gather here and support one another and who also continue to give to support the ministry which is happening among us. And we encourage you as you are able to remember Trinity with your offerings. We continue now with our prayers. Almighty God, you have blessed us in love with the Savior, through whom we have forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercy and to give ourselves fully to your service. Lord God, help us to show forth through godly living the fruits of the Spirit and to love our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way but joyfully follows our Savior's example. Almighty God, bless our president, our governor, and all elected and appointed civil servants. Help them to govern in a way that protects the weak and promotes life. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the lonely, the depressed, the anxious, the dying, and those who mourn. Almighty God, you know what we need and those things we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
the end of the service, we often have a slide up on the screen which says, go in peace, serve the Lord. And I pray that you would take that to heart. Think about that. We go forth knowing that God has blessed us, he has renewed us, and uh, we can go forth in his name with a purpose to serve him and our fellow human beings. And so I pray that, that you would be thinking about how you can interact with people this week and, and touch them with God's love and, and be a blessing in their lives as you serve the Lord. We encourage you that if you have any concerns to please contact us. Call me on my cell phone or leave a message at the church and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. The Lord be with you.